Hello crochet friends and welcome to another tutorial. In today's video we'll be learning how to make Gustav the tiny crochet goose. Here we can see Gustav made from different weights of yarn using worsted weight yarn, Premier's Just Yarn Just Chenille, and this is using blanket yarn made from Premier Basics Chenille. In this tutorial we'll be making him out of blanket yarn. To get started you will need blanket yarn in white, blanket yarn in yellow, a 6.5 millimeter crochet hook, scissors, sewing pins and a sewing needle, stitch markers, two 8 millimeter felt circles for eyes and glue to attach them. To begin, we're going to form a magic circle. Our first round will be six single crochet. One, two, three, four, five, six. I'm gonna place my hook through our first stitch here and tighten my magic circle. I like to pull gently so that I don't break my blanket yarn as it is a bit fragile and will snap if you pull too hard. Next, before I move on, I'm going to place a stitch marker in the final stitch of my first row. And now we're ready for round two. Our second round will increase. So we are going to place a single crochet and then an increase and repeat that around the row. And I'll show you. So for our first stitch, it's a single crochet. Our next stitch will be an increase. So we're gonna place two single crochets in the same stitch. There's our first single crochet and our second. And we're going to do that again. So we're going to place a single crochet in this stitch and we're going to increase this one by placing two single crochets in the same stitch. And then one more time to finish this round, we're going to single crochet. I'm going to pull my stitch marker and then place two single crochets into this stitch. We'll replace our stitch marker in the final stitch of the round and our round two is complete and we should have nine stitches total. For round three we will place a single crochet in every stitch so we'll be doing nine single crochets. This is one, two, three, and we're gonna keep going all the way around till we get back to the end of the round. Round four will be the same as round three. So we'll be placing a single crochet in every stitch all the way around. Just like that. And I'll meet you back at the end of the round. For round five, we are going to decrease to begin forming the head of our goose. So what we're going to do is start with a single crochet and we're going to perform an invisible decrease by grabbing the front loops only of our stitch. So normally you go through both loops but instead we're going to go through the front loop of this stitch and the front loop of this next stitch, grab our yarn, pull through both of those loops and then yarn over and pull through, and that's an invisible decrease. All right, one more time, we're gonna single crochet, and then we're gonna do another invisible decrease by grabbing the front loops of the two stitches, yarn over and pull through, and then yarn over and pull through again. And then one more time, single crochet, 
and then I'm going to take out my stitch marker, yarn through the front loops, yarn over, and finish our single crochet. There should be six stitches at this point. We're going to tuck our tail into our goose's head and we're going to start forming our neck. So we're going to do eight rounds total of single crochets for the neck. And when you're doing multiple rows or rounds of single crochet, rather than moving your stitch marker every single time, what I like to do is fasten my stitch marker on the side of that last stitch of the final round. And I'm gonna start single crocheting with that stitch marker in place. And now it's gonna tell me what round I'm on. So we're doing single crochet all the way around. That's five, and then this is our sixth. And we're just gonna go in that stitch around that stitch marker over it there. And now we can see that we've only done one round. And I like to do this because it helps me to keep track when I'm doing a lot of rounds. I can go back to where this one is and count the rows starting above that to see how many rounds we've done. So we are also gonna need to start stuffing our head at this point. All right, we've got our polyfill and we're ready to stuff our head. I'm gonna pull the loop up on our hook here and remove the hook so we can get it out of the way and take a small amount of our polyfill and stuff that down inside of our head to begin. If you're using wire or a roller to make your goose's neck posable, you'll wanna insert that now. So we put a little bit of stuffing inside of the head to prevent the roller or the wire from getting out. Now we're gonna put our roller inside and grab a little bit of our polyfill and stuff it inside around the roller. And it does take a little bit of uh, work to get the polyfill in the neck and the head around this roller. There we go. And then we'll keep crocheting around this roller as, our, as we go down the neck. Uh, currently we have one round of single crochets of our neck formed, and we're gonna do eight total rounds. So you'll wanna do seven more rounds working around this roller. Now if you're not going to work around the roller and you're just going to stuff your head and neck firmly, you can continue stuffing your head like normal. To show you how to work around this roller, we'll do an example. So we're going to put our loop, our hook through our loops like normal and form our single crochets, just kind of working around the roller. Kind of sticking off to the side of it like this and you'll just keep going until you've gotten eight rounds and you'll be at the end of round 13. If we're not going to use a roller or wire and just stuff our goose's neck firmly, then you'll just proceed with stuffing the head. So we're gonna get a little bit more stuffing and just work a small amount at a time. Shove a little bit more into there like so. And I'm gonna make sure none of the fibers are poking out so they don't get caught in my stitches. And then we've got a little more polyfill here ready to go and we're gonna stuff as we go. 
If you wait till you get to the end of your eight rounds of the neck to stuff the neck, your stuffing is going to be lumpy and uneven. It will be very hard to reach down the entire length of those eight rounds because it will be about this long when it's all said and done. So you're going to want to make sure you stop every two to three rounds and stuff the neck firmly and then continue stitching. So we're going to do a couple of rounds of stitches and then we're going to stop and stuff the neck. So let's start single crocheting. I'll meet you back in two or three rounds and we'll stuff the neck a little bit more. All right, friends, it's been three rounds, which we can see by counting up from where our stitch marker is. One, two, three rounds. And I'm going to make my loop big like before and pull my hook out and then get a little bit more and working with a small amount of stuffing at a time so that you don't end up with pebble necks, <laughs> pebbles in the neck of your goose. Just going to do a little bit of stuffing in there. Just a little bit more. And I want to have enough to stuff it, but not so much that it's tufting out the end as I'm working to avoid catching the polyfill fibers in my stitches as I go. So there, you can see the stuffing is like right here. I'm going to pick up my hook. Make that loop smaller and continue working. I'll meet you back in three more rounds and we'll stuff some more. All right, it's been three more rounds. It's time to stuff our neck a little bit more. Same thing as before, pulling up that loop, grabbing a small amount of polyfill, and then just working that down to where we had our previous stuffing and grabbing a little bit more. And that way we can work our stuffing in, like I said, firmly in the neck without overstuffing it or getting it lumpy. Because if you wait, it is going to pill up and get lumpy and then you're gonna have like blobs in the neck and that is not gonna be cuddly or cute or make your neck uh, have the right level of support. All right, so we've got six rounds total. I'm gonna do two more rounds. And we'll be at the end of our eight and I'll meet you back here of round 13 and we've done eight rounds of single crochet and then as you can see here I can keep track of all of my rounds without having to move my stitch marker and we can count so here's the round the end of our last round uh, of decrease and then we've got one two three four five six seven eight rounds so I'm gonna remove my stitch marker and then replace it in the final stitch of our last round of round 13. And now we're gonna stuff a little bit more. So I'm gonna pull my loop up and same thing. Stuff a little bit more into our neck. And grab a little pinch more. Give it a nice squeeze to make sure things are even. And I can do just a little bit more. All right, my friends. Now we're ready to start round 14. And we're gonna begin increasing to form the body. So we're going to do a single crochet and then an increase and repeat that three times for a total of nine stitches in our round. So we're gonna do a single crochet. And in this one, we're gonna put two single crochets. Again, single crochet. And in this stitch, two single crochets. And then another time, we're gonna single crochet. And in this stitch, we're gonna place two single crochets. I'm gonna put my stitch marker back in place. There we go. So now you should have nine stitches in your work. And for this round, for round 15, we're going to just place one single crochet in every stitch all the way around. 
So we should have nine stitches in this round total. That's three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So let's stop and stuff a little bit more to make sure that we don't get a wobbly neck. We're going to take another little wad of stuffing and work it right down into that neck and do just a little bit more. And if you are using a roller currently, then you can just continue working around the roller and then stuff nicely once we get to the next stuffing point on the body uh, at round 24, I believe. All right, you guys. So we're ready to proceed with round 16 and we are going to increase yet again. And for this round, we're gonna do two single crochets and then an increase. So we're gonna place a single crochet, another single crochet, and then in this one we're going to do two single crochets. And just keep going like this. Single crochet, single crochet, two single crochets, and then one more time at our two singles and now we're going to increase that's one and two in that stitch. All right, and now we should have 12 stitches total in our work. And then this round, for round 17, we are going to place a single crochet in every single stitch. Just like that, and you're gonna keep going and I'll meet you back at the end of the round. All right, friends, round 17 is complete and we've done our 12 single crochets. It's time to move on to round 18. In this round, we're going to increase again. And this time we're gonna do a single crochet increase pattern and we'll repeat that six times total. So we should have 18 stitches when we're done. Let's get started. We're gonna do a single crochet and then an increase by placing two single crochets in the same stitch. One more time, we're gonna do a single crochet and an increase. Keep going like that until you get back to the stitch marker, placing a single crochet and then an increase, and I'll meet you back here at the end of the round. All right, round 18 is complete, and we should have 18 stitches total in our work at this point. And now we're gonna increase yet again. So for round 19, we're going to do two single crochets and then an increase. So we're going to do a single crochet, single crochet, and then an increase. Again, we're doing a single crochet, another single crochet, and then an increase. Keep going till you get back to your stitch marker doing two single crochets and then an increase and I'll see you at the end of the round. We've completed round 19 and now we're ready to move on to round 20. And actually for the next four rounds we are going to just place a single crochet in every single stitch. So again I'm gonna do my little stitch marker trick and wrap it around the side of the stitch to help me keep track of my rounds without moving my stitch marker. And then I'm going to start placing single crochets in all 24 of our stitches all the way around. And I'll meet you back when we're at the end of round 23 and we have all four of our rounds of single crochet. Okay, I'll see you at the end of round 23. We have completed round 23 and have our four rounds of single crochet for the body. It is time to move on for decreasing, but before we do that, we're gonna form the tail. And this is a no-sew tail, which I think is great because it's one less thing you have to worry about sewing when the project is completed. So for this, we're gonna start with a chain three. So one, two, three. In the second chain from the hook, so we've got one, 
two, so in the second chain, we're going to slip stitch. And then in this third chain, we're going to single crochet. And now we're going to single crochet in the next stitch on the base of the body. And we've got a little nub here. And this serves as a tail feather. We're going to do three of these in total. So one more time, we're going to chain three. In the second chain from the hook. Oh, come on, buddy. There we go. In the second chain from the hook, we're going to slip stitch. And then in the third chain, we're going to single crochet. And then we're going to single crochet that to the base of our goose. And there's two. We're going to do one more of those. So one more time, chain three. In the second chain from the hook, we're going to slip stitch. In the third chain from the hook, we are going to single crochet. And then we're going to single crochet to the base of our goose. And that is what our little tail is going to look like. Isn't it cute? All right, you guys, it's time to start decreasing now that we've gotten our tail formed. So the first thing we're going to do here is do a decrease. So going through those front loops of the next two stitches. And then we're going to single crochet decrease and then we're going to single crochet two times and then do a decrease again we're going to single crochet two times And then a decrease. Get more yarn here. One more of those we're gonna single crochet two times and then decrease. And then we're going to single crochet single crochet and decrease one final time. We're going to replace our stitch marker here and this is what it should look like when you're done. Now you may be asking yourself, where do I go from here? Don't worry, I've got you. It's not difficult. We're going to place a single crochet in the stitches in between each feather. Okay? And we're going to make sure we do this with the feather pulled towards us at the time. Okay? Don't go like this and keep the feather here. Pull the feather down, go into the stitch like this, single crochet like normal. Okay? then the feather should stick out like that. We're going to do that again for this stitch. So we're going to this single crochet right here that is in between these two feathers, keeping that feather forward and not backward. So we don't want to crochet it into the body. We want it to stick out. Work our crochet stitch here. And then we're going to do that again to this very first stitch at the edge of our tail feather. Okay, make sure you get this, not into the side of this crochet stitch, but right here. All right, and there we have it. So we've got our tail here. And before we get any smaller, Let's just go ahead and stuff our body some more. So 
I'm gonna pull my loop up big like this and just starting with a small amount of stuffing making sure that everything in that neck is firmly stuffed. And just keep packing small amounts of stuffing in at a time. Once you've got the neck opening firmly stuffed, you can get a little bit bigger of an amount. And I like to stuff down from the edges to make sure that the outsides stay nice and even. Go down the outside here, get a little bit more. good amount of stuffing going on here. Let's continue on to our next stitches. All right, so our next round, or sorry, to continue where we're going in this round, we've done our three single crochets to get around our tail feathers. And now we're going to decrease single crochet decrease. We're going to do three of these in total. So we're going to do a decrease, single crochet, decrease. And we should be doing one more, decrease, single crochet, take out our little stitchy stitch marker, and decrease. You should have 12 stitches in your round when you're complete. We're almost done you guys, we're getting so close. So for this next round, we're going to decrease in every stitch around. Let's see if I can turn this to where you can see it. Alrighty. So decrease every stitch. We're going to front loops only. of every stitch around. We've done it. We've gotten to the end and we're going to fasten off our project at this point and close up our circle. We are gonna add a little bit more stuffing. So first thing I'm gonna do is cut my yarn. So we're going to pull our yarn through this loop, grab some scissors, cut your yarn with a tail long enough to sew and then we're just going to pull this yarn through that loop and pull it tight. And this is what it should look like. <clears throat> it's a goose butthole. Oh my gosh, that's so inappropriate. I'm sorry, you guys. He's a stuffy. He's not a real goose. Don't be offended. And now we're going to stuff a little bit more in here. See how I can get my finger in here and push into the gap in the stitches? We're going to stuff some more. So I'm just going to same thing as before, kind of use my finger to go in and stuff around the outside edges to make sure that our goose's body is nice and full and chunky. We want a chunky little goose body.
and you can kind of squeeze and feel and see if it if it feels gappy and it's still a little bit I got I probably can get all of this in here there we go all right our goose's body is stuffed and now we're gonna sew our magic circle closed Thread the tail of your yarn onto your yarn needle. And now we're going to sew our magic circle closed by sewing through the front loops of the ring of our magic circle. And going just through the front loops of every one of our stitches on that final round. Got a little bit of fuzz there. And now that we're back around to here, if we pull this circle, we'll close. I'm just gonna make sure it's tight. Just like that. So now we're gonna secure this tail. And I like to take it, like kind of make sure I'm in the right spot to make it fall nice and flush. We're gonna go back through this stitch here, kind of come out on the side over here pull that down and then I'm gonna go back into the body and come out on the other side just to make sure this is nice and secure so I like to go over a stitch here to blend it in you could just go back through the stitch but I think this makes it a little more snug we're gonna come out over here like that. pull our needle off Cut our yarn tail and there we go i always like to give them a little bit of a squeeze make sure everything is arranged properly inside when it's all said and done there and that's our little tail and there we have it your neck will be a little bit straight right here but you can bend the neck into the shape that you want it now that we've got our goose orientation figured out you can line up the tail here and see that our goose's head should be going this direction. And then you can kind of give it a bend and give it a squeeze to kind of get the stuffing to go into that shape like that. And it should be just fine. He won't be poseable like this but his neck should hold in the appropriate shape. And we're ready to move on to the other parts of our goose now. To make the wing, grab your 6.5 millimeter crochet hook and your white yarn and form a slip knot. Put the loop on your hook and chain four. In the second chain from the hook, single crochet and then single crochet in the next two chains chain one and turn your work single crochet another single crochet Increase. Chain one, turn your work. And we're gonna increase. So two single crochets here and then three more single crochets to complete this row. One, two, three. So I'm gonna pull a loop onto my hook, cut my yarn, leaving a long tail to sew, and pull that tail through the loop. And this is the completed wing. 
So you'll need one more of these and I'll meet you back here when that's done to make the rest of our parts. To make the goose feet, grab your crochet hook and your mustard colored yarn, form a slip knot and chain five. One, two, three, four, five. In the third chain from the hook, place a double crochet. So we'll yarn over, go through the back of our chain, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two loops, yarn over, pull through two loops. Next, we're going to do a half double crochet. So we'll yarn over, go through the back of our uh, chain, yarn over and pull through, yarn over again and pull through all three loops on our hook. Next, we're going to slip stitch. So we'll go through our chain here, grab our yarn and pull through. And that is our completed duck foot. I pull this tail through my loop, put the loop back on my hook, pull my yarn through here, and then I cut it and finish off. And that is our goose foot. For our beak, grab your mustard colored yarn again and we're going to make a magic circle. And place four single crochet into your magic circle. It's two, three, four. We'll tighten our magic circle. I like to do that with my next stitch on my hook. It helps me to keep things oriented. And now we are going to single crochet, increase, single crochet, increase. We should have six stitches now. We're gonna turn that inside out. So this is now the right side of our work. And then we're going to do a single crochet in every one of our six stitches. So one, two, three, move that tail out of the way four, five, and six. Now I'm going to slip stitch. And then we'll pull up a loop on our hook here, grab our scissors and leave a tail long enough to sew our beak onto the body. Pull that tail through our loop and then to pull it tight. And this is our beak. And we can shove our little tail from the inside down in there as stuffing. If you'd like to put a pinch more stuffing into this beak, you can do that as well. So we'll get just a little pinch. And we'll shove that little pinch right in here a little bit sticking out. There we go. Our beak is finished. We've got all of our goose pieces assembled and we are ready to begin sewing. The first part we're going to attach will be the beak. We're going to orient the beak with the tail facing upwards. So to find this we'll grab our goose's body, find the tail, and then just follow that up the neck to make sure we have it in the right position. Then I'm gonna take the beak, place it to the end of the head, and there's six stitches 
in the first round and there are six stitches at the end of this beak so it should fit perfectly to this very first round and to hold this in place I'm going to get one of my nice long sewing pins and stick it in the end all the way down inside of the head like this our sewing needle is threaded with the tail of the beak and now it's time to attach these two parts So I'm going to begin by finding one of those first stitches and go underneath it and then come back through both of the loops on the stitch of the beak. Then going sideways back down into the next stitch on the body and coming up through both of the loops on the beak. and I pulled the tail out accidentally, but it's not a big deal because we can easily push this back with our crochet hook. So we're gonna go in here through the side of the stitch and just kinda grab it with the hook and stuff it back in there. Come on, buddy. Here it goes. We can remove our pen now because our beak is attached. So just to secure it down even further, <clears throat> we'll go back through the stitch up here. Out like that. We'll remove our needle and cut that tail nice and close. Now we have our beak. To place the feet, we're going to sew them between rounds 25 and 24. So our final round is 26. This is 25 and this is 24. So we're gonna attach our feet to these spots right here on the edge of that round 25 where it meets round 24. So we'll take a foot and place it there. And you can see that it lines kind of up to the edge of this tail feather. And we're just gonna stick a pin in that guy. And then I'm gonna grab my other foot and place it on the other side of round 25 there, kind of lined up with the edge of that tail. And then I'm gonna pin it in place. And then I'm gonna turn him over and give it a look and make sure that I like where my feet are placed. This is kind of angled, but it'll be fine. It's just the way the pin is sitting right now, kind of making it look angled. So we're ready to begin sewing. With the tail threaded on a sewing needle, we're gonna start with one of our feet. So we have two tails here. We're gonna bury this tail in the body when we're done sewing. So it's gonna be a little bit in the way as we work through the process, but don't worry, you'll be just fine. We're going to go into the body and come back up through this foot, okay? So in through this stitch here, and I'm just gonna kinda of come back up through this. I'm gonna remove the pin so that we can see what's happening. Make sure you don't grab your feathers or this tail. Right, so we've come through this one direction. We're gonna go across this side now. So I'm gonna go through this and then back up into the foot. 
and then we're going to do the same thing on the other side so i'm just going to turn this because it's easier for me i am a chaotic sewer and turn things a million times while i'm working on it but i'm trying hard to show you the angle you need to see <laughs> all right and that should be pretty decent for our foot um, to bury this tail down though we're going to go back through a stitch here and just kind of into the body of the goose and I'm going to come back up through the middle of a stitch on this side we'll cut our yarn And I'm taking my crochet hook, just go in the body in a random place nearby, come out of the same stitch where we have our tail, grab the tail with my crochet hook, and bury it inside the body. And then we're going to do the same thing for this little tail. We'll trim it a bit shorter. Pull that extra bit of floof out of the way so it doesn't stay on the work. And then I like to look at the spots close to here and figure out where the best place is going to be. I'll take my hook, just shove it in in a random spot, come out here, grab this tail, and pull it back down inside of the work. And there you go one foot down. Repeat this process on the second foot and I'll meet you back here to sew on the wings. To position our wings, we're going to line up the top, which would be the longest part of the wing, to round 18, which is not the final increase round, but the one right before it. I've already pinned one wing in place on this side and I'll show you our placement for this other one. And the best uh, tip I can give you is to make sure you're looking at this from the side angle. So we're gonna rotate this goose sideways here. And now we can see our tail and our foot on the base of it. And if we turn our, our bottom up and look at our goose's butt here, this is the center of the base of the goose's body. So it's important to make sure that we're lining our wing up to the center of the neck area and the center of the base. And you can see this line uh, between where my fingers are. That's the line we want to sew our wing across. So we're going to take the long edge of this wing and line it up to round 18 right here. And you can use your tail to stretch down this way and try to line it up with the base of the goose's booty. And that should be where you want to sew your goose wing. So we'll just need to pin this in place so we don't lose track of where we want it. And we'll thread our tail onto our sewing needle. And get started sewing. And then again, before we put our needle in and attach it to the body, we're going to check one last time for our position. Pardon my chaotic sewing methods as I turn things around a lot while I'm doing this process. I'll try to keep it still for you for the camera. So I'm just going to kind of hold that tail down there so I don't lose track of where I want my wing to be. And then we're going to go in the side of our round here and come out and go up through this first round of our wing, or sorry, row of our wing, through the round of the body. We'll remove this pen now and come up through the row of our wing, down through the round of the body and then up through the row of our wing. stretching it across to get it to that center spot here we want that wing to line up this direction like this okay 
So we'll go back through the body and then come back up on this side here. And to make sure it stays in place, I'm going to go back through this side of the round and then back down through the body. And we'll just come up between some stitches a few stitches away. Okay, so now we can kind of look at the wing make sure it's placed where we want it to be and it looks pretty good so i'm just going to grab i i this is my securing method i grab a little piece of one of my stitches there pull that tight and then just go back into the body right next to it come back up in a random place and i'm just going to cut this nice and close to the body and you can't even tell. In this tail right here we can do the same method as we did with our feet and use our crochet hook to pull this tail into the body. So I'm just going to go in kind of a few stitches away and come out where I want this tail to go. and then bury it in the body. Now we're just gonna sew our other wing in place in the same way that we did our first wing. We've made it to the final step of the process. It's time to put some eyes on our goose to bring him to life. And I'm so excited. It's the last thing we need to do, but we don't wanna get careless. We wanna make sure at this point we place the eyes exactly where we want them. I typically place them at round three to round four, but put them in a place and kind of move them around, see where you like them best. Find the sweet spot for your eye. I think it'll be good right about there. And before we place it, we want to be certain that our head and neck is in the right position. Tension, I know this looks strange, tension varies from person to person. And as you can see with mine, it starts to spiral and twist. So I'm just gonna kind of twist it a little bit and make sure that it's where it wants to rest so that his eyes don't turn and be in a different position, if that makes sense. So we're just gonna sit him down and twist him a bit and make sure that his head and neck are decided where they want to be. Excellent. All right. I'm thinking right about here. What do you think? Looks good to me. And then we'll place the other eye on the other side in the same manner. You can use any type of glue you'd like for this process that would be suitable. A fabric glue. You could use hot glue. A hot glue tends to beat up and become really hard. So I tend to use E6000 and we don't need a whole lot, but a lot came out because I just opened this tube. So we're going to put a dollop on it, put the cat back on my tube, grab our second eye and wipe a little bit of the glue off. And we'll come back over here push down to make sure it stays in place like that and then we're gonna flip him over here and I think that I'll probably end up being a right about here turn him up to the top find your eye on the other side make sure that you've got the placement on this side on the same row so he's not kind of crooked and cross-eyed. And then I'm going to squeeze both of those on in place. And there we go. Our little goose has eyes. Oh my gosh, he's so cute. But this is not a good enough reveal. Let's take him outside and show you some good footage of him in the sunshine.
hope you've enjoyed this video tutorial on how to make Gustav the Tiny Goose. If you did, please be sure to give this video a like and subscribe for more fun crochet videos and tutorials in the near future. Thanks for watching and have a great day!